Ah. Uh, coming to you from the front yard today. Um, just, uh, it's where the sun rises. And so I thought I'd come out here and just take it in for a second and just take a moment to take a deep breath. I don't know about you. Um, yesterday was just a weird day. It's been kind of a weird week. It's been, um, maybe something that many of you can relate to where, um, almost instead of day by day, but almost hour by hour, it's kind of like, am I happy? Am I sad? Am I stressed? Am I worried? There seems to be just, uh, just an influx of a variety of emotions, right? And um, reading this morning and just thinking about um, reading a, a book by a, a former pastor, seminary professor named Jared Wilson. And in it, he just talks about just this reminder that at the end of the day, whether we're doctors, lawyers, moms, dads, um, whether or not we're politicians or pastors, whatever we are, that ultimately the first and foremost thing we are is that we're human. And so with that, we're affected by the fall, but we're also renewed by Christ. And so this tension, this evidence of uh, God at work in us is that things that maybe we used to be numb to, not necessarily okay with, but numb, with, numb to, that we weren't aware of, that we were ignorant of, as our spirit awakens, as we begin to become more connected with Christ, as we begin to see things more clearly and more fully, we become more aware of what's going on around us. And I think about that even this morning, sitting out here, one of the reasons why I was looking at the sunset is just, or sunrise is thinking about the difference between when things are dark and you don't know what you trip over or you can't really make out images. And I don't know if you've ever done this, but you've been walking in the dark this morning. I was going out to start the car and uh, in it, I got startled because I thought there was somebody standing next to me and it turned out it was our trash can. But in the dark, I couldn't really tell. But as the sun rises and things become more clear and more evident, we can see them more and more fully. We're able to hopefully, uh, in that we're just exposed to a lot of our own sin, a lot of the brokenness in the world. And so there's this proneness to despair. And I think about that reading in John 14 today and just seeing Jesus looking at the disciples and giving them this audacious statement that though I've been with you where I'm going, you're not going to be able to go right now. I'm going to leave you, but I'm going to leave you something better to the helper, the spirit. And what that must have felt like, or what they must have been thinking. Even I love Matthew uh, or Philip and his question of like, Lord, where are you going? And why can't we follow? And how are we supposed to know the way? It just, well, I've been with you three years, Jesus. Like, how can you say that you're leaving us and that what, and that that's better? That doesn't make any sense. But then he has this statement in John 14. He says, I, with peace, I leave you the same peace that I've experienced. Like, have you ever thought about that? That the same thing that Jesus is experiencing, the same um, peace that he has, the same relationship as he keeps saying, the Father and I are one. I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. And if you're in me, then you're in the Father. That that community, that that fellowship, that that connection with God, with Jesus, with the Spirit, that we have that same access not only to power, that he says we'll do greater works than these, but also to peace. This comfort of knowing that the God who came to earth and loves me and relates to me and knows me and feels what I feel and thinks what I think, that at that moment he could have said, I come knowing that I'll, I'll take everything over and I'll put people in submission and I will force my way and I'll fight for you. But instead he says, I leave you with peace. And shouldn't I expect that from the Prince of Peace? And isn't that ultimately what I need? That even if I had all the power around me, does it seem like that's gonna lead to peace within me? Some statistics I recently read is that while America is the foremost, most affluent, wealthiest country in the entire world, that we're actually only the 15th happiest. That just doesn't seem to work, right? If we're the most wealthy, if we're the most powerful, if we're the smartest, then shouldn't we be the happiest? Or maybe is happiness not found in those things, is peace not found in those things, but that gentle calmness is found in knowing that the one who rose the sun today, that his mercies were new this morning, that his steadfast love never ceases, that he's always faithful, always working, always present. And even in the midst of what we feel like is darkness, the earth is rotating and the sun is coming. And so be reminded of that today, friends, whatever roller coaster of emotions that you deal with, whatever the ups and downs, that Jesus has left you with a helper that lives inside of you and peace that can dwell in your mind and your heart. And so God, I do, I pray for an awareness 
of what, the brokenness of the sin, of the hurt that's all around us. I think about one of my kiddos last night and just the hard talk of talking to them about just the fallenness and hurt, betrayal, pain in the world, but yet we don't grieve, we don't mourn, we don't engage with that pain in the same way that the world does because we have hope that he who begun a good work in us is faithful to complete it, that you're at work in creation, that as it groans, that you hear its groans, that you will one day not only restore, but renew. You will rebuild. And God, that we will have genuine, everlasting, eternal revival with you. And so God, help me rest at peace knowing that today is not the last day. But today I'm one day closer to you. I'm one day closer to knowing you face to face. I'm one day closer to being in your presence. I'm one day closer to living in a reality that there is no pain and there is no hardship and there is no sin and there is no hurt and there is no fractured relationships. But Father, that we will be perfectly unified with you and with one another. God, we love you. We thank you for loving us. We pray you help us to love others well, that those that don't know you, that have a story going on underneath the story that are carrying a burden that we don't know, that we can't imagine, but you can. And we know that we can be your hands, your feet, not just in service, but in being a calming, peaceful presence. So God, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being a promise, not only giver, but keeper. God, we rest assured in who you are. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Praying for you. Pray for me.